Instagram and LinkedIn. Do they work the same way? If you are a freelancer, if you are a professional, if you're looking for a job, how should you make the most of your LinkedIn profile and your Instagram profile? Today, I'm very happy to bring Rose from Happy Freelancer here. I have been wanting to talk to her on a video for a long time. We had some problems. We had to reschedule, right? But I'm very happy that we can do this today. And uh, can you please introduce yourself, Rose? Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm happy that we can finally shoot the video. Yes. So my company is called Happy Freelancer, and it's a platform for freelancers to meet each other online and offline and to learn from each other and to take freelancing to the next level. I really enjoy your content because you bring a different perspective to the freelancer work and the struggles in a fun way, in a way that make us think and, you know, try to find different solutions. So you are very untraditional in the way you do your content and I really <laughs> connect with that. So yeah, if you're not following Rose yet, just search for Happy Freelancer on Instagram. She's very active and she actually adds a lot of value. So that's how I got to know you randomly on Instagram. And then I remember yeah. when we, we met in person, right? In Bali, I saw you enter in the cool work and I was like, mm, I think she's rose and then i approach you and yes you were rose from happy freelancer and uh, we find out that we have a lot of uh, friends in common and all of that but yeah that was how we met in person in bali after i had been following yeah. your content on instagram yeah <laughs> and i've been following you too and uh, i saw how active you are on linkedin and it actually really inspired me it really made me see that linkedin is such a big potential that i didn't realize before and I was just focusing on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And then it, feel, it felt like this whole world of LinkedIn was opening up to me. <laughs> and I felt really the same way about things. <laughs> there is a lot of potential. So that's exactly what we want to talk in this video. We prepared the questions before, but we don't know the answer of each of us. So uh, <laughs> let's talk about it. Let's go deeper into Instagram and LinkedIn and all the potential that it has to offer. Do you want to start, Rose? Yeah. Okay. So when I just started with LinkedIn, I had the feeling I had to be a different person. On Instagram, I always felt like myself. And then on LinkedIn, I had the feeling like I had to be this professional person and I couldn't really be personal. What do you think about this? That's a very common feeling. Like I have to be another person. I have to dress up and I have to pretend I am more professional than I am on LinkedIn. And Although the platform has a professional touch, I agree with that, it's still you. I, I think it's more like sharing maybe a different perspective of the same situation, the same aspect, and present something that is more aligned with a professional platform. So just to give an example, yesterday I did a, a group mentoring about LinkedIn and on Instagram, I shared a photo of my backstage, the table I was and all the lighting. And I shared a video of me dancing because that's how I warm up to the event. I shared that on Instagram. I was still talking about the event and on LinkedIn today, I'm going to share about the main learnings and the main topics that we spoke about and a question to make people think about it and review their profile. So it's still me. It's still the same situation I'm talking about, but I choose one uh, perspective of that to do on LinkedIn. I have seen videos of people dancing on LinkedIn too. And I have seen more uh, tutorial or the five steps to whatever on Instagram. So I think there is an overlap and whatever makes you feel comfortable. Sure. Yeah, but I found a balance like that. I put a video of me dancing on Instagram and my table, the working table, the, all the recording. And on LinkedIn, I'm gonna talk about another side of the same story. So maybe slightly more professional, but still you, still with your touch. That's the nice yeah. thing about it. When I started on Instagram, I had this, um, kind of prejudice, I think I can say like that. I was for two years, I was like, no, I don't wanna create an Instagram account, I don't need it, that's not professional enough, what am I gonna use it for? And then I had the feeling the content there should be more light, more about images, more about, um, I don't know, superficial stuff, that was my impression at the beginning. And I felt, uh, right the opposite that you feel like, I felt like on LinkedIn, I could go deeper into topics that I like, I, I felt more freedom on LinkedIn to go deeper and actually I felt that on Instagram I had to be more superficial about my content so how do you feel about it yeah I feel like for me Instagram is a platform that allows me to go deeper to really go in depth about any topic that I'm interested in uh -huh. um, and Instagram does have this site where you can be a bit more superficial light topics but I think it really depends on your audience 
I think if you start posting about super serious topics or really go in depth and share your knowledge, you will automatically attract people who want to talk about these topics. For me, that's the most fun about Instagram. You can really share anything. So it's your little channel within Instagram. And if you want to go all into one specific topic, I think that's totally fine. Now I kind of changed a bit my perspective. I, I agree more with you, but at the beginning I was very like, oh no, that's not for me. And I think I'm finding my, my way, my comfort zone, let's say on, on Instagram also. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it takes time to find your own comfort zone and your own space within Instagram. But I think it's, it's with every social media platform anyway, yeah. that you first have to try some things. And at some point it's, it's easier to just be yourself and share mm -hmm. whatever it's you. Yeah. Because it works different for each person, right? So what you did not necessarily works for me and vice versa. Well, so yeah, we need to test. Every person needs to test to find their own balance and feel comfortable about it. When it comes to LinkedIn posting. So for me, Instagram feels so free that I'm free to share <laughs> whatever I want. But what do you think on LinkedIn? Are there any no-goes, things you shouldn't share that maybe you can share on Instagram? You can share a lot of things on LinkedIn, but there are some things that you shouldn't, okay? So one of them is uh, things that are discriminatory. I think it also applies to Instagram. So you do see some yeah. discriminatory content and all of that. People can report and even uh, your profile can even get blocked. So I think it applies to all social media, including LinkedIn. If you start posting content that is not related to your area or to your uh, main objective on the platform, you can do that, but you kind of mess up the algorithm. So one day you're talking about one thing, the other day you're talking about the opposite thing. So you can do that, but even people who follow you will be confused. It's like, okay, I'm following her because she talks about this, but suddenly she's only talking about the other things. So you shouldn't yeah. do that. You should maybe define two or three main topics that you talk about that you want to be seen as an expert on it. And then you go deeper in each of those topics. So avoid messing up the algorithm because it doesn't help you at all. The sales approach. Um, I like an, uh, an idea that I heard that LinkedIn, you won't be there to sell, but you'll be there to connect with people that later on you can sell to them. So it's much more about building up relationships and not just selling straight away and hi, we just connected and this is my service. And a lot of people do that. And it's very yeah. annoying. So that's another thing that I would say a no-go on LinkedIn. Not going straight to the sales part because it probably won't work. And another thing also very important is like not engaging with content. So with your own post, so you post something, you get some comments, you don't comment on the comments, you don't reply to people, you don't bring the, the engagement further, or you just post your stuff and you kind of wait and don't engage with yeah. content. That's also something that you, you can do, but you shouldn't do because your visibility will decrease and yeah, people will stop connecting with you. It's like, what for? <laughs> I write to her, I make a comment and the person ignores me. So lack of engagement is a no-go. I think that's super similar to Instagram. It's also on Instagram, if you just post your own content and you don't really engage, mm -hmm. I think that's not really a good strategy. Yeah. So I think it's similar because they are all social media platforms. So some things might be slightly different, but once you understand one platform, you can pretty much apply that to other platforms. Although I yeah. have to say, I think I arrived late on Instagram because I was resisting for like two years. I remember my friends telling me, you have to be on Instagram and all of that. I was like, no, <laughs> I don't want to be on Instagram. That's not for me. So I have this feeling, I still have this feeling. I arrived late on the platform. So there are way too many people there, people with a lot of followers and like, I don't have that many followers. I feel like I struggle to get visibility on Instagram. Yeah. For me, it's easier on LinkedIn and all of that. So is there any tips? that you have tested or that you have heard about to increase my visibility on Instagram? Anything I can do? I don't really believe there is a thing as being too late on the social media platform. Um, <laughs> I used to think that too. Like I started only two years ago with Instagram and by then there were so many people, there were influencers, business accounts, there were freelancers just rocking their Instagram. And I had this feeling too, like, what am I going to add? But in two years time, I actually grew from one follower to seven and a half thousand followers. So oh. that really showed me that it's possible, okay. even if you start late, to, to really find your own space within Instagram. And I think the most important thing is creating good content. Because there are millions of people on Instagram, but not millions of people are actually creating good content. So I think there's only maybe, I don't know, like 10% of 
people who are creating super, super valuable content. And I think even if you arrive late, if you try to be within that 10% of people that is really adding value to the world, then you can still, even if you start today, you can still make a difference. You can still find followers. You can still attract the right people to your Instagram, but it doesn't work if you just make content for the sake of content. So really try to think like, how can I share value? How can I add something what is not there yet? How can I really create something that, that helps other people? And I think that applies to LinkedIn also. So yeah, interesting. I, I think that's anyway for every platform. And also that takes some time to figure out like really what do I want to make and where do I start? But it's, it's still very possible to, to find a lot of followers. Yeah, you grow the lot in two years only, right? So there was a big program. Yeah, I had actually last week I had my two year Instagram anniversary. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Happy two years anniversary. Nice. <laughs> what I'm always wondering when I post on LinkedIn, so I know how the Instagram algorithm works, but then on LinkedIn, I have no clue about the algorithm. So for now, I'm just posting whenever I feel like posting. But what would you recommend? Is, is there something specific to the LinkedIn algorithm? Think about your audience. Think about the people you're talking to and then try to imagine when they are going to be on LinkedIn. Try to identify which time of the day. So maybe early in the morning when people are going to work or on the lunch break or when they just finish work. Uh, because the first hour of the post of whatever you share is very important. So the algorithm will be kind of looking, checking the performance of your post in the first hour. So the more engagement you have in that initial hour, the better. So if okay. a lot of people comment, like, share the content especially in the first hour, the algorithm will say, mm, this is a good content. I'm going to show it for more people. And then more people will engage and then it keeps showing to more people. So uh, be intentional about when you post it. And as a general rule, Monday and Friday are not the best days ever because on Monday people are very busy at work. So they have a lot of emails to check and all of that. And Friday people are already thinking about the weekend. Some people have posts that have a great performance on the weekend, but you need to have a lot of followers. So for beginners, yeah. I would say Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, initially right before working hours at the lunch break and after you finish working. But then the more international your audience, the more you can play a bit with the time because if you have oh, yeah. that follow you in different countries, whatever you post, anytime you post, you're going to have people that potentially will engage. It's about testing. So target some days and some hours and see the performance of that post. And if not, you change. But um, depend on the content also, people will engage more or less. It doesn't matter at the time. So be intentional about the the first hour of the post and the performance that it's gonna have also use of hashtags but that's similar um, as far as I know with Instagram so for LinkedIn so far because the algorithm keep changing they are talking about three hashtags not more than that play a bit with that smaller hashtags that your post will have more visibility bigger one that will be uh, show to more people but again it's going to disappear very fast so play a bit with the size of the the hashtags also and you can tag people on your post but i heard recently that if you tag someone and that person doesn't engage with the content then the algorithm is kind of punishing uh -oh. you yeah because people you should tag the influencers you know just to try to attack uh, attract yeah. them but if the influencer doesn't connect and engage with that post it doesn't make sense. So be careful with who you tag on your post. Yes, maybe it's better than to tag like a business partner or someone you worked for or, exactly, or exactly. Your friends that you have yeah. been brainstorming with. Or. Mm -hmm. And people that you know that engage because maybe it's a work partner, but the person is not very active on LinkedIn. So it doesn't make sense for the algorithm <laughs> that you tag that person. And when it comes to Instagram, I'm always uh, hesitating about the amount of posts that I should post? Like how often should I post a story, for example, every day, several times per day? Um, also with the feed, is that a nice balance? It's more stories than something on my feed. So how do you balance that, the amount of content between feed and, and story? Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm not sure if there's really a correct number because I really think it depends on your audience, for example, okay. um, but also how much time you can put in. Because of course, I would love to make content every single day, but I also have other work to do, so it's not possible. <laughs> but I think what is most important on Instagram is to be consistent. So better not post too much and be very consistent than post a lot and then don't post for days. 
and then so suddenly pick it up again. So for me, what, what really works is posting two posts per week. Okay. And it doesn't sound like much, but my audience is actually, it's working for my audience, it's fine. And then I try to post two or three stories per day too. Okay. And that's also on the low side. I know there are people who are posting like 20 stories per day, but if you can't keep that up consistently, it won't work in the long run. And for me, I found out that two or three stories a day is doable. So the, the algorithm of Instagram will see that I post frequently and it's fine. Mm -hmm. And if I would go a bit more up, it wouldn't be doable and I wouldn't find the time anymore. Even if, if you can post one story a day, it's already better than not posting at all and then posting 20 at the same time. Okay. I don't know how you got to three stories per day and two posts per week, but probably was testing, right? And see uh, the... the yeah the volume of work that you have and what serves your audience and all of that. But it seems like a nice number. Yeah, doable with the work volume. That we yeah, have. exactly. And, and if I would have more time or someone who could help me with it, then I would love to do more content. But I think for me, this is doable. And for my field, it works. But maybe for other fields, it can be a bit more or less. So it's also a matter of just trying and, and see what works. And if your engagement really drops, it probably means that you're not posting enough or not consistent yeah. enough. Then you need to increase and test. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then when you find this stable rate, then you're at a good spot and then you have to yeah, keep on going. Nice. I really love making content and I like writing stories for LinkedIn and I'm posting quite frequently now. But what I still struggle with is the connections part. So on Instagram, I can add anyone I want. I can just say hello. It, it feels like whatever you can connect to anyone. And then on LinkedIn, for me, it feels really weird. Like, can I add someone? Do I say hello? Do I need to know <laughs> that in, in, in real life? What are the rules? So can, can you tell me a bit more like how I can connect to people on LinkedIn uh, without making it weird? That's a very common fear. Like uh, a lot of people think that they should only connect with people that they know. And some people say people I know in person. So that's a mistake. I mean, the, the more you open your connections on LinkedIn, the better, because there is also the visibility. So on LinkedIn, you get visible up to three levels of connection. So if we are connected, my connections are your second level connection and the connections of my connections are your third level connection and that's it. After that, LinkedIn puts like a barrier and it won't be seen by anyone else unless if the person has a paid version. So for the sake of the visibility, it's important that you increase your connections, but be intentional about it. So if your target audience are people who speak English or Dutch, why are you going to be connected with people that speak Spanish, for example? I'm not saying you, sh you shouldn't accept that connection, but don't use your time to go proactively and invite those people. If they invite you, you can accept, but be intentional about who do I want to connect with, my potential clients, my potential employers, and then just uh, face the fear of, I don't know them, but I'm going to still send a connection request. And the more personal you are since the beginning, the better. I know it might sound a bit forced, like, oh, yeah, I don't know the person. What am I going to say? But it's just like a live networking event, right? You are there with your drink and you're, hi, how's the weather today, whatever. And you start talking. So you can do like that. But you can go a bit deeper. You don't need to talk about the weather on LinkedIn. So you can check the person's profile, for example. See where the person is stirred, where the person is working at the moment. Uh, check the content. You can check in the activity part and see posts that the person posted or videos that she participated. So you kind of know already a little bit more about that person. And you can talk about it when you personalize the message. So it's just not clicking the button connect. But it's like, Hi, Rose, I have been following Happy Freelancer and I really like your fun and interesting approach to the freelancer struggles. I would love to connect you. So if you call the person by the name, you make it more personal. You refer to something that you like. So it's related to our ego, like, oh, she took the time to check my content. She liked what I do. So there is already some connection. We were, uh, we didn't know each other before, but right now, I know you, I have been following your content and I'm just asking to connect with you. So it's not the time to sell anything. It's not the time to ask for a job. It's not the time to offer a partnership. This, if it happens, will happen later. So just get the connection, be nice, be personal in this initial message that you can add. You have 300 characters to do that. And that will increase the chance of connecting. And once you're connected, then you can send longer messages and, um, you know, start talking to that person and make your 
offer or yeah. whatever you want to do. But choose who you want to connect to and go for those, those people. Before you send a connection request, you can actually engage with that person content. So you can start commenting their posts. You can start sharing that, clicking like. So when you send the connection request, it won't be the first time the person hears about you. It's going to be like, oh, I know her. She's that girl that has been commenting, adding value to my post. So accepting your connection request will be just natural. It's just like the next step of the process. So instead of just sending the connection request, go a longer way, interact with that person, and later you send the connection request and it's going to be much more natural on the process. Yeah, exactly. I think that's much less weird than just out of the blue sending a message. Exactly. Rose, when it comes to Instagram, you asked me about LinkedIn, so I want to ask you the same question. Is there any no-goes when posting on Instagram? Anything that we should definitely avoid? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think with Instagram, you can definitely go further than with LinkedIn. I'm not even sure if there's something you cannot post, but it really depends on your brand. Like for me, I would not post a party photo on my business account because it doesn't fit my brand at all and it makes no sense. Okay. But then maybe if your brand is, I don't know, maybe you're working in events and setting up parties as part of your business, yeah. then I would say go for it. And there, there are also personal brands for businesses that with, with girls showing photos of themselves in bikini, but it really fits their brand, so it's fine. Okay. Like I wouldn't do it because it doesn't fit my brand, but I think... As long as it fits your brand, really go for anything you want to post, but just be, like you said, respectful to other people. That's very important. And really think like, what makes me unique? What makes me me? So really try to stay true to yourself and don't copy things because other people are doing it. So if they feel free to talk about whatever topic, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to do the same. Just, yeah, stick to to your own ideas and thoughts. And I think then it always works. I love it. And I think the same applies to LinkedIn. Align the main topics you want to talk about and then go deeper on it. But don't talk about all the things that are not related or don't post content about that. Yeah, pretty much the same yeah. thing. I have a last question for you. So I was very uh, excited a few weeks ago on LinkedIn. I saw this new feature. It's called LinkedIn Stories. Yeah, And I think the Netherlands was one of the first countries to, to try it out. And it looks a bit similar to Instagram stories, but I didn't dare to post anything yet because I wasn't sure, like, can I use it in the same way as Instagram stories or is it a bit different? That's the one million question. And I have seen a lot of people posting on LinkedIn about it. Like, how are we going to use the LinkedIn stories from now on? So I haven't tested yet to tell you the truth, but it's going to be available to all the profiles uh, soon, the next month. So this is something that each of us will need to decide, okay, do I want to use it and how to use it? There is still some mystery about it and people don't really know yet how to use the LinkedIn stories, but I think it's going to be close to Instagram, like sharing more the backstage of the situation, uh, like grabbing your phone and do like a selfie, whatever, not a more formal thing. And I think each of us, we need to find the right balance, just like you said on Instagram. Uh, does this kind of content that I'm going to share on my story make sense? Does it add value to my audience? Does it add value to me as a professional? But I think it's going to be pretty much like Instagram story with your phone and more informal and funnier and on the go. Literally, I'm going to a meeting, I'm going to the bakery shop and I'm thinking I just had this business idea. So we still need yeah. to see and I haven't tested yet, but I think it's going to be very similar to the Instagram stories. Let's see. Time will show. I will give it a try soon. Yes, me too. I'm curious to try that. Rose, I think we could spend way more hours here talking about our experience and things we tested and we enjoyed and that worked out on Instagram and LinkedIn. But yeah, let's finish this video for now. And I will definitely add your Instagram account on the comments of the video. So if you're not following Rose yet and Happy Freelancer, you should do that. Definitely. Her content is great and fun and insightful so Thanks. thank you <laughs> thank you once again for your time i hope we can meet in person soon somewhere. yeah me too <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much and i hope people could get some new insights about instagram and about linkedin take care bye